shot from Shadowbird. Oh, Damage boy. off the wall. Gets Char the way out. And a okay. punch. What? A quad for Shadowbird. Shadowbird. <laughs> Ten Ten is up on either side. Oh, that's going to be the eight oh, point. Oh, oh, he's in the way. Could that just be it? They push around the side. Michelle throws at the bomb. He's looking for some picks, but he's not going to be able to find anything. 99% right now for the Soul Dynasty. Gladiators desperately need to get the split. Fisher taking so much damage. He needs to trans. He's done. Pushing Damn, right into his front. Jay Long still holding on to the transcendence. Now going to be popping at the bomb. He's going to be coming through on the back of the ground. Gone surge. Can he get the picks? Boy, oh, and the triple kill. Well, hello there, everyone. This is Esports in 30, the show where we take a deep dive into a different esport every day of the week. And today, it's time to leave the farm behind because we're going with the birds, the owls. It's Overwatch League, and there are no more goats involved. Bringing it back to the farm where goats live. Uh, my name's AJ Fry. With me here on the couch, it's Ron Renanthra Lee. He's the coach of UC Irvine Esports and uh, my co-host as well. And we're both, I think, both excited that we're seeing Very much so. the end of the goats meta in this, the first week what of the second stage. I mean, what is it? Yes. What is it? I mean, I'm I'm just happy old McDonald's purchasing some more livestock. You know, right. we're getting some again, right? Some ducks on the, on the pond, some chickens feeding on the seeds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep going with this. Not as metaphor. ferocious as Give we us need some more farm animals. dangerous <laughs> piggies. Anyways, what are we talking about we today? We did see AJ? some piggies, and we will be did going we? further oh, yeah, into the I details. To totally meant to. In just a bit. Uh, but before we get into all of the conversation, why don't we show the good folks at home some highlights from the first week of the second stage. Romero's not quite getting the connection. He's going to get narrowed up and actually finds the shot. Corey is in the house. Takes him down. Looking for a little bit more. It's going to be another one. The Sonic Arrow the is Sonic on the end. Arrow. Takes him down. Gets that go. Corey, you are a monster. He has defense. Whoa, nice shot from Shadowbird. Oh, Damage boy. off the wall. Gets Char the way out. And okay. a punt. What? A quad for Shadowbird. Shadowbird. <laughs> Johnny there. All right. Shadowblade. Shadowblade. Can he do it? Grenade's already the off them. He can indeed. There's Gogushwe Adora. Welcome back, Hoxall. Still has the amplification matrix available to him. Yeah, if you can put a good one up there, that's a good chance. They're going to go in now with this. Okay, amp matrix down. Trying to cut through that sound barrier. Shadowburn taken out. They're going to fire the whole hog through the amplification matrix. <laughs> plus the Bastion. Plus the supercharger. <laughs> plus the supercharger. <laughs> I know they're going to oh, oh, the high ground. Oh, look at that. Oh, they put that down. All right. Next stop, point A. Why not? But Color Hex is going to be able to just play here at range and see just the angle. Oh, he's, he's just chilling. Can. He's just hanging out oh. in the back corner and he gets three. Oh, he comes around the side with a poison trap of all things. Going to be taking him down by Corey. Now, but Corey gets another one on the end me. The bomb thrown in. Sounds like I'm just trying to zone him out. Corey looking for another angle. Spots him. He takes out Neko, and this could be it. Ivy Another gonna one. be eliminated. Transcend is up on either side. Oh, that's gonna be the eight oh, point. Oh, he oh, it away. Could that just be it? They push around the side. Michelle throws at the bomb. He's looking for some picks, but he's not gonna be able to find anything. 99% right now for the Soul Dynasty. Gladiators desperately need to get the split. Fisher taking so much damage. He's he's done. Done. Pushing Damn, right into his front. Jay Long still holding on to the transcendence. Now going to be popping at the bomb. Going to be coming through on the back of the grab Gone surge. Can he get the picks? Oh, and the triple kill. He might just do it. I'm going by Humbaba, but... Oh, hello. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not what you wanted. It's like a horror movie. He goes right up to the high ground, able to pick up two. We've seen this happen to teams before. Trying to play Chongdu's game. They get lost in a haze of bloodlust, and they wake up with a lost message on their screen. They've got to keep it together, but Shadowburn, that was very classy. Kio and Bacon Jack both falling quick. Oh, exactly. <laughs> what a connection. Color Hex getting harassed in the back part of Grenade's run at RCK. But all time. Okay then. Yakul drops in with a pile driver and he's got two. Telex went down first. No resurrect. And Blase was second with a wrecking ball in the fight of opened this fight up. In a flash, it was over. Oh my goodness, a highlight reel with some DPS plays in it. Turns out, yeah. we're playing a shooter. Yeah. So you have crosshairs <laughs> and not just hammers. It's, it's man, not just a bunker push forward game anymore. So foreign. Yeah. It's such a foreign game. It's so delightful you know? to see. But this isn't entirely the end of GOATS. It seems like it's a strategy that will have some application. For sure. But it's nice to see that Baptiste is affecting the meta overall. So what are, what are your thoughts on the, the meta as it stands right now and, and moving forward? Um, I know a lot of people were clamoring for the death of GOATS. A lot of people were saying, no more tanks, no more supports. We've seen this for 10 months. We need some variety. So 
variety we have. Like now we have uh, DPS once again, right? We have some yeah. bunker comps in Orisa with Baptiste, yeah. um, which are really nice to see as well. Um, I'm kind of glad that GOATS is on its way out, but I never wanted it to be exist. I like GOATS, I like the environment, and you know, like they're yeah. important for the ecosystem of the game. Yeah. Just not 24 7 every match. Well, every it seems game. like it will still be a viable strategy, especially when it comes to close quarter situations, like yeah. towards the final point on uh, Route 66. Yeah, it's a big one. Uh, the end of King's Row, yeah, maybe Hollywood. getting around that corner. Yeah. Um, yeah, Hollywood is what I was saying. What did I say? Route 66? Yeah, it's we kind of a tight. That works too. That yeah. works too. Yeah. As long as it's nice and narrow. Payload maps giving you that final tight push to the end. Is that just a gameplay design thing, I guess? Probably. I mean, well, it's a Good similar. idea, I think, by map developers and stuff to make sure yeah. it's not the same whole thing three points throughout. Yeah. Um, after all, their initial philosophy was that you're supposed to be uh, switching around a lot, you know, yeah. dynamic problem solving and such. And we're only finally getting to it now, like two seasons into Overwatch League. So, which is bizarre to me because you would expect like the the best players to be able to make those switches where I play and uh, <clears throat> high plants really low plat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like no one's switching anything. Even right. asking people to switch to make the comp better, it's people are like somebody. adamant, like no, no, I'm a Reaper main for life. That's mm -hmm. all I'm doing. Right. That's so frustrating. But it's nice to see that these teams are kind of adapting to the Chengdu model of like throwing <laughs> lots of ideas out I there. I mean, no. No team's quite at Chengdu's level right now. They're yeah. playing pretty much everything. We'll talk about them a little bit later right. on as well. But uh, let's start by talking about Boston, the new champions yeah. of the reverse sweep, uh -huh. going 2-0. Um, yeah, w what are your thoughts on Boston here and their, their new performance, as much as everyone seems to hate Boston teams in all so, sports? <laughs> is that a thing? <laughs> I, I don't think follow it's a traditional sports. Like, yeah, I've, I've heard this. Well, I mean, in esports, they're following a similar tradition. They're not yeah. the fan favorites typically. No. But um, that being said, we can't deny their skill and ability. Yeah. Um, there were some rough moves from them at the beginning of the season, right? They picked up Color Hex, yeah. uh, who is from Australia or New Zealand. Uh, I, th I believe the only Kiwi in the entire league. Mm. Um, and because they were playing Ghost for so long, he wasn't really able to stretch those DPS muscles. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people critiqued his Zarya play as something a little lackluster. Uh, you know, and Huck, their GM, is typically praised for finding all these rough, uh, diamonds in the rough, you know, guys yeah. with a lot of talent and potential. And we're seeing that finally explode on stage now with him dominating on Soldier, on Widowmaker, or even on Farah at some point. Mm. This guy can really play everything, just wasn't the greatest Zarya for one stage. Yeah, well, we also got uh, the trade with Boston. They picked up Note. Uh, from, no, they uh, took no, they and took they, note, yeah, yeah, they sent them to Dallas Fuel, yeah. who gave them RCK in return, which I think is actually a really good trade for both teams. Why? So Note has always been very consistent. He's been a smart guy, um, you know, get stuff done, but yep. no more, no less. You can, he's like, he's the rock of the team. He yep. always has been. Um, RCK, he came from Team Giganti in Europe. Uh, a lot more vocal of a guy, a lot bigger of a playmaker and mm. more assertive and confident in what he wants to do. Mm. So Boston kind of lacked that sort of direction, that, that vocal essence that really drive them home and kind of give them a style or a flavor. Yeah. And RCK brings that. Um, that, that aggression, that, that kind of like oomph, you know? And Dallas always seemed split and kind of off the mark and not always united, but now they have a guy that will anchor them down and make sure everyone's on the same page, and that's what he's good at. Now, we had this conversation uh, just before we started rolling as well. The difference between a shot caller and a playmaker. I know right. you can give the shot caller uh, award to someone yeah, on your team him. when you're playing yeah. in competitive mode, but they don't have a playmaker award, so what's the no. difference? So a playmaker is someone that looks to be the changing kind of factor in a game. He's the, he's the make or break, do or die type of person. Mm. So a shot caller can be someone that says, okay, we should play this comp, right? We should combo these alts. Uh, they might track some alts, but the playmaker will be the ones to, I think, make the explosive or the flashy plays. They'll Instigators versus shot callers a little bit more like your in-game coach? Yeah, basically. I mean, you have kind of like, um, your ace in the hole, right? And that's kind of like your playmaker. Okay. Whereas your your shot caller is the in-game leader. Got it. Right? Okay. Well, let's uh, switch teams now uh, off of Boston and their amazing uh, reverse sweeps to Valiant. They had a big trade as well. Oh, yeah. Fate, uh, a tank, and uh, KSF, a DPS. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and there's this whole thing with the Fisher leak. This is a bit of this a dramatic is, story happening yeah. here in OWL. Ron, break this down because I've heard a bit, but it's okay. a little messy to follow. All right, so I got I got you know my my serial killer like investigation detective board behind me, if you imagine. Oh, so you have the pins and needles and the red strings pointing yeah. from picture to picture. Yeah. So if you imagine this, we got Valiant on one side, who have a mixed roster of Westerners and Koreans. Yeah. Right. And Boston, who also had a rather mixed roster. Yeah. Uh, of Westerners and Koreans. Um, Valiant had main tank Fate and DPS player who's usually on the bench, KSF. Yeah. Um, you know, so a tank and a DPS here. And then Boston had on their OWL team, Fusions, who's their main tank. So they're trading main tank for main tank. Yeah. But their DPS player in Asking is actually beneath them in their academy team. Uh. So the package was, was going to be you got Fusions and Asking yeah. for Fate and KSF. But I think a lot of people believe that Fusion was getting the better end, or not, sorry, not Fusion, uh, Boston was getting the better ends of the deal, trading Fusions um, and asking away. Right. Because, well, Fusions has a really good Reinhardt, but he might not be so good at Ball or Winston coming into a new meta where Reinhardt maybe isn't so valuable. Right. And Valiant, although they had problems, neither of these guys really seemed like the problem. KSF wasn't getting played, but Fate was always like a mainstay of that team. So this information leaked. Yes. The two teams got to Reddit, see what the yeah. reactions were on Reddit. Yeah, and social media exploded. Fell apart. Yeah, I mean, the Redditors were like, well, Valiant's getting fleeced here. Right. I mean, these guys are great. Um, Boston, you know, Fusion is awesome and stuff in this meta, but he's probably not future proof. This is kind of a risky trade. Um, and turns out, you know, whoever leaked this, and, and you know, a, a news article came out recently saying that it was Fisher who's actually on Team Envy, which is Again, the board, Dallas Fuels Academy team. Right. This guy got wind of it because players talk. He leaked it to a news source, apparently, allegedly. Yeah. Right? And then because this news came out, Valiant got cold feet and they backed up the deal last minute. So then Fisher, who supposedly leaked the, the deal, he was dropped from that roster, right? By Envy. They're like, we don't want to deal with this guy. He was supposed to get signed by Energy, who is Shock's Academy team. This is a big board. Right. Right? But then. Envy, their coaches were like, oh man, this guy doesn't deserve the opportunity, right? After what he did, I wouldn't recommend it to any org. They told Energy a day before his flight, that contract got you know, taken away and now he's homeless too. It's, it's a big mess and it's a lot of he says, she says, and we're unsure exactly what's going on. It seems though that Valiant is trying desperately to you know, recoup from their not so great yeah, uh, zero first seven, stage. And, yeah, 0-7, uh, yeah. So is zero this- 0-8 now. Yeah. Lost another game. Um, Can they come back from this? Are they ever going to be able to find their footing for this season? Or are we just writing them off <laughs> now at this point and saying good luck again in season three? It's, I, I applaud them for trying to make a drastic change. Clearly something has to go. Yeah. Um, you know, Coach Moon already left, still having problems. Maybe, I, I, my guess is, again, they had partially a Korean core and partially a Western core. It seems to be clashing. That whole thing with Custa, if you remember, mm. having too big of a brain to play. Yeah. Maybe they actually want to, turns out Reddit's right. Maybe if this guy's so smart, we should play him. Right. But if the Koreans won't listen to him, maybe some Westerners will. Maybe we trade some of these Koreans away and get you know, some Westerners that'll listen to Custa, that'll work mm. out. But now that deal's dead in the water. So, you know, hopefully they can sort something else out. Maybe, I mean, I'm not a GM by any means, but I would be very skeptical about the opinions of Reddit myself. Right. Yeah, you gotta trust to your intuition, you gotta right. trust your... You know. you know the inner workings of your team, if you think yeah. it's for the best, like it's surprising to me that you Make know, a couple of upvotes on the internet are all it takes to sway a decision like that. Right. Well, let's move to another team that's uh, trying to shake things up in order to move up the rankings. Florida not doing so great. And it seems that they might be going for an all-Korean roster moving forward. They mm. uh, booted a few players, Apply, McGravy, as well as uh, Tivik and, and coaches as well. Yeah, Coach Mineral. Not panning out for them. Was this their right decision and they just need more time to gel as a team? Well, let's, let's look at this analogy, right? Let's say we had a kitchen. Okay. With, um, you know, you're opening a brand new restaurant, right? You hire a Chinese cuisine chef, a guy that masters in Chinese food. Yeah. A guy that masters French food, for example, okay. right? You get a bunch of newbies in. They want to learn how to create fine dining experiences and whatnot. Mm. But you have these two coaches just telling them completely opposite recipes, two different chefs. styles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or chefs. Sorry. Oh my God. I broke the, I broke the metaphor. You broke the metaphor yeah. for I mean, the sports show where we're talking about cooking. Imagine yeah, I understand. trying to learn from these guys, right? Well, how do you think that would go? It's not going to be esports background. great, especially if they're not all speaking the same languages. You right. do have to have a synergy within your team, especially when communication and coordination is so mm -hmm. important. Yeah. You want to have a flavorful dish that 
inspires victory in the mouths of your Mouth. consumers. Yeah, get them salivating, <laughs> get them inspired. I mean, we could, Goats was a very like coordination heavy meta. Yeah. Right. A mixed roster then is dicey, but doable. We see mm. a lot of other teams have mixed rosters all the time. They succeed. We've seen teams like Shock of a mixed roster succeed. We've seen. Um, Philly with the mixed roster succeed. It's not undoable. Right. But Florida just never captured that well, winning formula. One team with the winning formula, and they have an all Korean roster. We got to talk Vancouver Titans. Oh, man. Uh, this new meta coming in. They're still winning, still undefeated so far. Is this better for them? Can they continue on this win streak with, uh, you know, goats going the way of the dodo? Because they were the best <laughs> at goats, and now it's something new, it's something fresh. Can they maintain this consistency? I mean, we saw Haxall, who, you know, fun fact, his name actually means massacre in Korean, uh -huh. which I believe is very appropriate. We saw him whip out that Genji and King's Row. Yeah. Kind of, you know, took that dragon blade to town. He was, you know, wiping off the rust and then had to wipe it again from all the blood of his enemies, <laughs> right? Um, I don't think Vancouver are moving anywhere else but first. Right. These guys look like they were great in terms of coordination, mm. and that's like a fundamental that'll last regardless of meta. Do you think there's a lot of like frustration in the rest of the league for the fact that this was essentially a team that was not part of OWL and then just brought in essentially as a whole entire package team? Oh, and now like the just, new kids. Like yeah, the but like they're undefeated and everyone else is like, well, we were the pro players first, this expansion team. <laughs> is there a resentment in the league or is everyone just impressed by their gameplay because they've just been so consistent? I think if you're a pro player and you're like jealous of another team, your focus is in the wrong place. Right. I, I'm pretty sure you should be working on um, you know, your locker room culture, if that's where your brain is at right now. Right. Um, all the teams obviously want to win, they want to be number one. Mm. Um, so it's okay to be envious of that spot, but to be like, oh, we were here first, that seems kind of ridiculous to me. Mm. Well, let's talk our other Canadian team right now. Toronto, one and one so far. Your favorite? Lost to, yeah, My absolutely. Favorite? Our favorite? Well, we, we're here in Toronto, so, <laughs> you know, got to play favorites here. Lost to Boston in that uh, reverse sweep. Boston yeah. delivering many of those. We got our brand new player, I'm 37. Um, Speed running that Overwatch League. Yeah. Captain Pro. A fantastic story. Second win to Toronto. Obviously, mm -hmm. Stellar stepping away. Unfortunately. And Neko as, like, the potentially best Baptiste in the league. Amazing mm -hmm. play on Lejeune. What are your thoughts on Toronto right now, Ron? Um... I'm a little disappointed in their stage one performance, but coming into stage two, I'm excited to see. Disappointed their in their up. stage one performance. Yeah. They were like ranked fourth at the end of stage one, and yeah. they're an expansion team. And you're Do you want to say that? your favorite city is only fourth best in the league, AJ? Look, are I, you settling for fourth, AJ? I was surprised that they got to fourth, given that they're an expansion I believe, team. I thought that they were number one potential. Totally, I'm not exaggerate. <laughs> and, okay, let's be real. No one expected them to do that well. Yeah. But after seeing them do that well, yeah. you can't help but kind of get your hopes up a little bit. You're right. I was expecting at least third, you know. But I'll, you know, they got knocked out in the they stage one. They did, but it's okay quickly. because they, yeah. they're they're getting their their you know they're figuring stuff it out. together for stage two. They got an awesome new player. Yeah. Who speaks great English, very marketable. You see yes. the interview? We'll talk about that yeah. more later on. That was a fantastic moment, but. Um, yeah, just hoping that Toronto can continue to, you know, put some wins on the board. Yes. They do have some uh, incredible talent to go up against. We need to win something. With, Toronto needs to win something. New York and Vancouver still in the league. But it, it's nice that no one else really scares us at this point, right? Like, right, I guess so. You know, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with pretty much everyone. Yeah. One team that uh, is starting to turn things around a little bit, Paris, going 2-0 so mm -hmm. far. Weren't so hot last stage, but uh, Shadowburn is in, doing lots of damage. We got uh, coaching change with uh, Damon leaving and Fefe moving up. So will this new meta play into Paris's favor? Are they going to be uh, more dominant with this new meta? So I think, and again, initially when they're coming in, people underrated them quite a bit. Mm. And then they went, I believe, they started off stage one, 2-0. Yeah, uh, and strong went, start. Yeah, and they're like, wow, 2-0, these guys are looking really good. What, what's their score right now, AJ? It was, it's two and zero. Is that here familiar? Off the top of seems... this second stage. Yeah. They just got to hold on to that this time. If they go right. three and zero, oh, they've, sh you know, broken Easy. that just, trend. Easy. Just continue to win. Yeah. No yeah, problem. Yeah. You'd be a great coach. Yeah. You should take my job. Yeah. Click on their heads, guys. That's yeah. It. <laughs> well, I told them that all the time. It's like, okay. Well, the problem is their heads here. Yeah. <laughs> but you hit here. If you just line it up a bit more, that's all you need, right? Yeah. yeah, that's all Owl players need. Just someone to tell them click heads. Is there anything that Paris needs to know? To Continue click heads. Click, okay, right. all right. Get Shattered Burn, get Shattered Burn on the DPS still. <laughs> he didn't play stage one because it was he's not a tech yeah. player by trade. He's yeah. not very vocal, you know. Um, but that's okay. If you're off on your island and again, you're doing what coach says, mm. then who needs coordination if you're clicking mm, six people's heads? Yeah. They should all die. At least mm. half of them if they're not tanks. 
right? Um, but obviously that's not how life works. You need to be more coordinated than that. You need to alleviate pressure and stuff. And we haven't seen how coordinated they can be when things are more chaotic. So I'm excited, mm. but I'm cautiously uh, you know, reserved because we have seen the story before. Mm. Well, a team that's looking to recover after the loss of DeFran. Atlanta Reign sitting at 0-2 so far in uh, the second stage. Rest in peace. Yeah, what, what does Atlanta got to do here? I mean, uh, and where's uh, Daco? Uh, who knows? Whenever people ask him, they're like, uh, Daco who? Yeah. You know, I, I don't live with him or anything. We don't, we have no idea who this guy is. We never heard of him. Um, but he did great in, in stage one, kind of went missing. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, DeFran also missing. The Shrines in the Overwatch League, pretend there's one here. Yeah. You know, this is, Rose. I mean, ultimately the fan favorite team in the league, but will they maintain that status now with their big star player gone? Can they pull this together? <sighs> That's hard to say. I mean, he, he was definitely the reason why they were the most popular. Um, in terms of like his his aiming ability and his mechanics and stuff, Baby Bay can rival that. That you know that's mm. not a big deal. But I'm sure Defram brought morale and you know direction in a way that maybe Baby Bay does not currently. Mm. Uh, zero two isn't a great start, and I it's, mean it's only two games. Like only two games out of seven games per stage. Yeah, that's like a third. They can kind of a little less than a third. Like, math is hard. Things around eventually <laughs> be five and but when? two. If when they, they're 03, when they're 04, yeah. you know, it's you don't have much time between these stages, and if they like, you have such a good player sitting on the bench, it doesn't seem like you're taking the active strides of recreating that magic you had in the first one. Mm. Well, let's talk about some of these uh, teams from China. If you're a Chinese fan, we were, I think, talking last week how you should be very happy with all the performance at the end of the first stage. But now we might have to take that back as, uh, yeah, they're not doing great. Shanghai at 0-1, uh, Charge at 0-2. 0-8 total, get 4-0 twice in a row. Ugh. Yeah. And uh, Spark at 0-2 as well. Is this a communication problem for these teams? I mean, for the most part, they're like uh, mixed teams in China as well, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're a fan of Chinese players, not Chinese orcs, but Chinese players themselves, you really only have one horse in this race in Chengdu. Because yeah. Shanghai has mostly Koreans. They have pretty much all Koreans, I think. Yeah. Um, they have a couple of Chinese players, I'm sure. But the Spark is in a similar situation, all Koreans outside of Gu Shui and Crystal. And then Charge, who has a couple of Koreans here, has a couple of Westerners there, a couple of Chinese players there. They're a mixed, really mixed, the most mixed team in the entire league. Mm. If you're a Chinese, fan, again, just for players, you only want to root for Chengdu. So I guess we weren't necessarily lying last week if you're a Chinese yeah, still fan. Happy, especially with, with the performance from Chengdu Hunters. I mean, they were just amazing to watch. Oh, so yeah. much fun. 2-0 this week. Yeah. You know, hard to be upset at them, but the other teams, they have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Now, uh, Chengdu uh, in a bit of a sticky situation in that they finally got their uh, their player who was uh, locked in visa hell, mm -hmm. I mean, Yang Zhao Long. Yeah. And now the meta switched, and he's a super strong Rhine, yeah. and we may not be seeing much Rhine play. What a shame. Just, yeah. you hate to see it happen, you know? Uh, are, they, are they entirely a team of flex players? I guess so. I think in their one match against Washington, where they won 3-1, yeah. they actually played 27 out of the 30 heroes in all the Overwatch uh, roster. Wow. Which is massive, in one series. Yeah. So, you know, they brought out things like Junkrat, and Doom, and Genji, and... Symmetra on Hanamura, that was crazy to watch. And so far in this stage, the only hero who has not gotten any play is Ash. Why do you think that is? I think it could be because, well, I mean, she's essentially Widowmaker, but not... widow Light. This. Yeah, she's widow Light, <laughs> and Bob is, a, is a, an ultimate that doesn't always have the, uh, the practical application of yeah. other alts. It can be very hit or miss. When it's a hit, it's a devastating hit, but mm -hmm. when it's a miss, it's Quite totally... literally, he'll throw you into the air. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you could... You can sleep it. Do you it, think we'll you see hack it. like a, an Ash rework the same way that we've seen some major reworks for like Symmetra? Because I mean, I when Ash was announced, I was super excited because I loved mm -hmm. the idea of like throwing a, a, a huge Omnic. Well, that as well. Oh. But the, the dynamite reminded me of uh, my days playing like Demo Man in TF2. Yeah. So I was super stoked for this player, but or this character. But I've hardly ever touched Ash. I'm just not super accurate with mm -hmm. their like one shot, you know, scoped right. thing. So yeah. Will we see a rework, do you think? Uh, I think she occupies the middle of the ranges where McCree is on one side and then Widow's on the opposite side. Yeah. She, she fulfills um, both their roles just a little bit worse. Where she has, but in my opinion, I think she has a stronger ultimate overall. It's more easily thrown around, right? It's more versatile. Right. You can use it to push carts, to save people, where you can't really do as easily with Deadeye and her inf uh, Widow's Infrasight. But a little sleep dart, and then Bob's just... Just don't get slept. 
Yeah. You know, just click heads and don't get slept. <laughs> and then it's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dallas. Yes. This is a pretty big issue. Uh, they didn't play this round, but this right. is something a little bit more serious. We talked about this on Muted last night. Mm -hmm. Effect has announced uh, his retirement due to mental health issues. Yeah. And Ron, you're obviously uh, a skilled Overwatch player, but also uh, someone who was involved in coaching. So how mm -hmm. important to you to, as a coach, but also as a human, is maintaining mental health for, for people, uh, you know, for pro players in the esports scene overall, not just Overwatch? Yeah, I mean, this might come as a surprise, or maybe not, but esports is really young. Esports is something that's only been around for the past like decade and, and it's only starting to ramp up now in terms of professionalism. Mm. So I you know, I work for UCI, University of California, Irvine, where this is an academic institution where we take things like mental health very seriously. Yeah. Um, they have fitness trainers at my school and they have, you know, sports psychiatrists on, on staff ready at all times. We talk to them once a week. We make sure these guys are healthy in both mind and body because we know um, how burnout is a big problem. These guys are studying every single day on top mm. of doing homework and juggling personal lives and relationships and practice and study. It's, it's rather difficult. Imagine this being your full-time job yeah. and the differentiation between home life and work life is very hard. It's the difference between playing in an arena and playing at home. Yeah. Um, on top of effect having, again, a history of issues with mental health, you know, he, he just recently came out as LGBT, you know, representing the bi community. Yeah. Um, and having him step away is a tremendous loss to both diversity in the league, but also, um, I think, a big setback for not just Dallas Field, but esports as a whole, because we should be treating these guys better. Yeah. Uh, we definitely do need to be uh, making sure that they are not, uh, you know, putting too much weight on themselves yeah. uh, under this pressure. I myself was never really big into sports as a kid, but my brother was actually a bit of a baseball prodigy. My parents always instilled in him, like, this is a game, it should be fun. If it ever stops being fun for you, you got to stop That's playing. That's important message. Because it's, it's important that you're having fun doing this thing. It's what it's really all about, and when it mm -hmm. isn't. Uh, yeah, it's time, time to move on. So hopefully we can continue to you know, put pressure on the authorities in these positions to make yeah. sure that they are looking out for their players, not just their physical health so that they can perform, but their mental health is uh, equally, if not more important. Yeah, especially with the, the cerebral run. type of game like Overwatch yeah. or, or any esport at that, right? Um, like yeah. Effect was <clears throat> the Korean slayer. He was a Korean kid from Korea, joined a Western team. And then when he was on Envy before Overwatch League started, mm. he decimated every other Korean in the league. He was um, the classic anime villain. He was cold as ice. He always had that kind of stern demeanor. Right. Um, and it's really sad to me that we started seeing his more happy side, his more true to self um, come to light and have him so quickly leave the league only second season in. Not even all the way through at that, so it's very sad. Yeah, very sad. But uh, we are running out of time, so we'll try to end on some happier notes with okay. some more fun stories. You can try uh, and cheer me up. It's not going to work. Uh, well, actually, this, this could lead into a lengthy debate. I don't even know if I should bring this up. Bishu, back in action now, obviously recovering from some health issues of his yeah. own. But he's playing two-way for uh, Legion um, with... Uh, yeah, their academy team. Yeah, uh -huh. the uh, Gladiators, Gladiators. Uh, Academy uh -huh. team. What do you feel about this? Because I was arguing with Lisa on Unmuted about this yesterday. I feel like if you've got one player that you've designated as your go between who can play on both teams, I'm cool with that. Um, what are your thoughts? Should there be a cap as to how many players you can put on both teams? There is a cap. Yeah. I believe you can only have two two-way players. Um, and Legion is only using Bishu as their first. Right. So as far as I remember, um, I'm fairly certain that's correct, which is fine. I mean, Bishu is a veteran in the esports scene. Yeah. He's played on the Owl team. He's played in League of Legends. Um, and he knows both Korean and English. I think if there's anyone that needs to be kind of a role model, um, it'd be him, and it's nice that you could have your role model double up. Yeah, exactly. Be there for the, the contenders team, kind of teach them, be a bit of a mentor in that capacity. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll end on this story. We mentioned it earlier. I am 37 uh, when he arrived uh, with uh, the That's defiant hilarious. in the arena. He was being interviewed on the floor mm -hmm. uh, by the translator who posed the question to him in English and then repeated it in Korean. Mm -hmm. And then I am 37 grabs the microphone and is like, I know everything. <laughs> I heard everything you said twice. Thank you for repeating yourself. Um, yeah, the, the guy's a riot, you know? Yeah. Um, Toronto had a couple of people, you know, kind of throw some jabs at them as like, oh, your guys, you guys are good, but you seem kind of bland or generic and not a lot of personality. Right. Um, I'm 37 giving yeah. the, probably the best interview I've ever seen on the Overwatch League stage. It was just hilarious. Yeah, I, I think we got some personality on the team. I like yeah. Rocky and everyone. Yeah, Rocky, the big head, Rocky, yeah. very good looking, cute guy. Yeah. But you know, now we have a comedian. People yeah. love comedians. Like, you, you like uh, Kevin Hart? 
Sure. Or Steve Carell. Who's your favorite comedian? <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. As of late? Well, that's a loaded question. There's somebody to think of. Who? You. Ah, oh, that's Because that's your nice. gameplay's a joke. Oh, God, he's crushing Absolute me. joke. That's, we've got to go on that No, Things just turned around. He got super mean. <laughs> uh, Ron, uh, thank you for hanging out with me and enlightening us all. Thank you out there for watching the show. And if you want to do the same again tomorrow, we have a banger with Drew, Brody, and Jackie O talking all things fighting games. Maybe that's what we'll get ourselves into later. Um, Catch us on the socials at Squad State. Bye! Are you really going to beat me up? In a game. <laughs>